relay. What we're going to be doing here with this network, it's all set up now, right? All set up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to create a DTP server, which is R1, for the whole network here. That means that this router is going to serve as a DCP server for VLAN 10, 20, and 30. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the DATP server right here, right? So we go here and then we're going to do IP DATP pool, pool name VLAN 10. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to specify the network. Network 192.168.1.1. Ten dot o two five five that two five five that two five five that o right and the default router is going to be one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot one DNS server cloudflare one dot one dot one dot one right exit so this is going to be the IP address of the sub interface that we set up because we use router on a stick, right? So we got that all set up. This is gonna essentially propagate those settings to um, uh, VLAN one, host in VLAN one, host connected to that VLAN, right? So moving on, gonna do the next DCP pool VLAN 20. Network 192.168.20.0255.255.255.0. Default router is going to be 192.168.20.1, which is the sub interface of the, which is the IP address of the sub interface on this router. DNS server 1.1.1.1. Boom. Done. Now we're going to do it. Uh, also for VLAN 30 right here, right? So IP DHCP pool VLAN, VLAN 30 network 192.168.30.2030. See, these are how typos happen. Misconfigurations. Default router 192.168.30.1 and DNS server. Boom, right? So we just set up router one as the DHCP server, right? And since we did that, we can now move on to allowing for the DHCP relay to happen, right? Or we can configure the DHCP relay, right? So, here we go. The first thing we need to understand is how this works, right? This is our DHCP server for this whole network, right? So, these hosts have to have a way to communicate with this DHCP server. And the only way to do that is to do it through this router right here, as we can see, obviously, right? But the way that DHCP works is that it uses a process called DORA, right? Discovery, offer, request, and acknowledge, an acknowledgement, right? So the discover message is a broadcast message. And we know typically routers do not propagate broadcast messages beyond the subnet, right? So in order for these hosts to get their IP address and IP address settings, such as the DNS server and all these other network settings, right? It has to send a discover message out. It goes to this router. This router would relay, <clears throat> excuse me, this router, I should have brought some water. This router would relay the message over to the, this DHCP server, this router right here, and then it'll allow these hosts to communicate back and forth. So 
Um, I didn't even turn on DTP on the devices yet. I'll do it over here first to make sure that everything is working. Because sometimes I screw up. Okay, so these are in working order, right? So, just a little review for DHCP, right? The Dora message. So the discover message is sent by the DHCP client to find a willing DHCP server. That's that broadcast message that's being sent from these hosts out to the whole network, right? The broadcast message is sent, all of these network devices get the, the message, right? Then the offer is sent by DHCP server to lease to that client a specific IP address and inform the client of its other parameters, right? Like I call them network settings, right? So in our case, we want to create a DHCP relay situation where this router is relaying those messages back and forth. So that discover message will go beyond, right? And it'll go here. But how is that actually happening? So let's just finish up the Dora process, right? So the request is sent by the DHCP client to access server to lease, excuse me, the IPv4 address listed in the offer message. The acknowledgement sent by the DHCP server to assign the address and to list the mask, default router and DNS server IP address, right? So as the book says, DHCP clients, however, have a somewhat unique problem. By the way, I'm using the CCNA 200-301 Official Cert Guide by Wendell Odom. This is in Volume 1, um, Chapter... No, this is Volume... It's actually Volume 2. Yeah, this is Volume 2, Chapter 7, right? So the DHCP clients, however, have a somewhat unique problem. They do not have an IP address yet, but they need to send these DHCP message inside, messages inside IP packets. To make that work, DHCP messages make use of two special IPv4 addresses that allow a host that has no IP address to still be able to send and receive messages. So that's 0.0.0.0, .0 as the source IP address and the destination IP address is gonna be that broadcast, right? 255.255.255.255. So this is the local broadcast IP address. Packets sent to this destination are the address are broadcast on the local data link, but routers do not forward them. So that's the key, that's the key problem here. And that's what DHCP relay um, solves for us, right? So let's just go scroll down a little bit, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this configuration in. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to log into this router. And yeah, we're gonna log into this router. Interface G01. Let me double check and make sure it's actually G01. Yes. G01 IP helper address. And we're gonna specify the address of the DTP server, right? And we do that by specifying this IP address here. That's what I like to do because that is the reachable address of the DTP server, 172. I mean, you could put another one. I'm assuming you can put one of these sub interfaces here, but I'm not even gonna do that. 16.1.1, um, right? So this is going to allow for these Dora messages to be propagated back and forth between the DTP clients and the DTP server, right? We're gonna propagate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until they get the address, right? So what it does is, and I'm just gonna read from the book a little bit. It says it watches for incoming DTP messages with destination IP address of 255.255.255.255, right? So when it gets a Dora, a discover message from the host. This router says, okay, cool. And what it does next is it changed that package source IP address to the router's inter incoming interface IP address. So it's gonna be this IP address right here, I believe, right? Incoming, 
right? So it changes it to this IP address, which would be 172.16.1.2. I should do some Wireshark stuff. That's another thing I need to work on, doing some Wireshark to actually prove that's what's happening. And then what happens with that is the next thing is it changes the packet's destination IP address to the address of the DHCP server as configured right here. So remember, when these DHCP clients send the Dora messages out, like when it sends a discover message, it has a source IP address of all zeros and a destination IP address of the local broadcast IP address. What this router does when the IP helper address command is configured, this command right here, what this does is it changes the um, it changes the packet's source IP address to this incoming interface's IP address, which is going to be 172.16.1.2. And then it changes the destination IP address to the DHCP server's IP address, which is configured in the IP helper address command. That's all it's really doing. It's, re it's like relay, right? It gets the packets, changes the fields, and then sends the packet on to the DHCP server. The DHCP server does what it's supposed to do, sends an offer message, client receives it. Again, this is doing all of the interchanging and the changing of packets and stuff like that, right? and then it routes the packet to the DHCP server, right? So, let me see. This command gets around, this is the key part, right? Because we know that routers do not route the local broadcast. Like when it gets a broadcast message for the link, it doesn't propagate that beyond the, sub, the, the subnet, right? So, it gets around, it says this command gets around the do not route packet sent to 255.255.255.255 rule by changing the destination IP address, right? So that's brilliant. I love that. That's absolutely brilliant to me, right? So let's see what happens when we set this up, right? Let's see if I configured it correctly. That's essentially the gist of it, right? The main ideas. You gotta typically know what's going on, right? So it sends that discover message to the land facing interface, right? Obviously, the router says, okay, I know what to do with this because it has the IP helper address command configured on it. So it's watching for incoming DTP messages with the IP address of the local broadcast um, IP address, right? And then it just makes those changes as we named before, right? Then it routes the packet along to the DTP server. The DTP server obviously swaps the destination and the uh, source, right? So now the, the destination and the source, obviously they switch places and send it back over. And then it just does that until the it gets through the whole Dora process thing and then it allows for us to get IP addresses. So let's see, moment of truth. Did it get it? Nope, it's not getting it. I must have misconfigured something. So let's see what I misconfigured. So it says it failed. Let's see what I did incorrect. Oh, we gotta troubleshoot something, right? Let's see. Let's see, maybe it's something to switch this or something. The default gateway. Oh, I think I know what I did wrong. 
The default gate with the default router. Wait, didn't I? I did set that as a default router, right? I think I did. Troubleshooting time. Let's start setting up some pings. Let's do some pings. The native VLAN is 50. Oh, it's not supposed to be a trunk. It's not supposed to be a trunk. Um, yep. Um, no. Yep, I think that's what it was. Let's try it again. Troubleshooting. Gotta know how to troubleshoot. And that ping, I think that ping clued us in on where the issue is. That's what I did in the previous, well, one of the previous videos on network troubleshooting. So let's see now. Let's try again. again so all right you know what let's no it's up okay let me see DC 
CP address conflict. Yes, it, this is the problem right here, but no, that's not the problem. The repair. can't ping it can't ping its default gateway okay now it's pinging it all right now let's try it let's see yep there we go it works now all right so the problem was that this I had this set as a trunk link that was a misconfiguration so essentially in one video you just pretty much got <laughs> you got DHCP relay along with troubleshooting right and that's why I like doing these labs pretty much in real time I didn't pre-configure any DHCP stuff before getting onto this lab to make sure everything worked correctly because it doesn't even make sense doing that because something can always go wrong while you're configuring also, while I'm streaming this stuff, recording this stuff, you know, and explaining it, I can always just go into autopilot and misconfigure something. So essentially, the problem was that this link right here, it was, I configured it as a trunk link. Um, the issue with that is that it, wait, what was the issue with that? If this was configured as a trunk, what exactly was the issue with that? Because it should be able to carry... Hmm. Yeah, the problem with that is that I didn't have this set as router on a stick, right? So that was essentially the issue right there right so i pretty much just went into autopilot and configured um right here i configured a trunk link on this g01 port when it was supposed to be an access port because i wasn't doing nothing too crazy over here it was just trying to illustrate the process of the dhcp relay right and this is the dhcp relay agent right so everything else 
still stands. So let's just do like a little review, right? So when you configure DHCP, DHCP relay, right, on a router, first thing that happens is you, first thing you wanna do is configure the IP helper, IP helper address command on the LAN facing interface, right? That's this interface right here, right? You wanna configure it there. That way, when it gets the broadcast message, it can, next step that happens is that it watches for incoming, let me save this real quick. That's a great way to really ruin this lab. It watches for um, incoming DHCP. The reason why I just saved it just now is because sometimes this thing crashes and that's why I said that's a great way for us to ruin this lab because it'll crash and we lose all our progress, right? So it watches for incoming DHCP messages. with 255.255.255.255 as the destination. So once it knows, once it sees the 255.255.255.255 as the destination, it knows that a uh, host or hosts are trying to communicate with a known to the router DHCP server, right? And I say known to the router because Remember, the when you configure the IP helper address command, you have to configure it with a specific IP address. That is the IP address of the DHCP server. But R2 needs to have a route to that DHCP server and it should be in its routing table, right? So, um, and in this case, it's directly connected to the DHCP server, which happens to be the router, right? So watch this for incoming DHCP messages with all 255s as the destination. And then the next thing it does is it changes the packets source IP to the IP address of the incoming interface, which is the interface directly attached to the DHCP server, which is R1, right? So essentially, let me just break this up. Essentially in our case here, the incoming interface is um, G0, G00, which has an IP address of 172.16.1.2, right? So its source address of the packet is going to be 172.16.1.2, right? Destination address is going to be 172.16.1.1, right? So changes the destination address to the IP address of DHCP can't type of DHCP server which was specified in the IP helper address command right and then the next thing is it does all it does so that's essentially the DHCP relay process um, you saw a little bit of troubleshooting you saw how you can try to configure this know that you have everything cor um, configured correctly and then still botch it by missing 
this little detail here. And then you notice how I troubleshot it, right? You have to identify the problem, right? And how I identified the problem was I started thinking about all of the configuration steps that I went through. I, I tried to narrow it down to maybe something broader like the DHCP server. I looked over here and said, hmm, maybe I misconfigured the DHCP um, server over here. Then I said, hmm, you know what? Let me see if I can even ping the default gateway. The ping the default gateway, couldn't find, couldn't ping it, right? So I knew that the issue was somewhere over here. The issue is somewhere over here. It has to be somewhere between here and here. And that's essentially what we did in another video, right? We had to slice up the path a little bit and narrow down where the issue can be. And that's what we just did just now. And I wanna give you a little, a little secret. It's not really so much of a secret. I highly suggest that you make videos similar to this one when you're applying to IT jobs, you're trying to get your first IT role because when you can make videos like this and try to configure a lab and, and it's not gonna be super clean, that's a good thing because interested employers would want to see how you're thinking about problems when you encounter them. And that's something that I picked up while interviewing. Like I went on 16 interviews so far this year and a main trend that just kept coming up over and over and over again is not necessarily having the right answers right away, but your thought process behind getting to a possible solution, right? So we saw what I just did and I'm leaving, I'm not editing anything out. I'm leaving all of that in so that you guys can see the pauses, how I stopped and I thought about it. it. Might not be good for those of you who have, you know, press other pressing issues. Maybe you need to get the answer real quick and, you know, go get the information from the video and go. But there's gonna be issues where you have to troubleshoot it. In the real world, things do not work as perfectly as people might, you know, think, right? I know there's other people out there that want to make their configurations nice and clean uh, for the YouTubes and all that stuff. But if we're learning together, it's important that we go through these type of things together, shoot these, uh, troubleshoot these issues and, you know, have some fun with it along the way, right? So again, you saw how I isolated the problem. I just used the ping command and I pinged the, the default gateway, see if I can get to the default gateway. I saw that I was getting the IP for address and said, hey, look, let me just go ahead and troubleshoot the default gateway. I checked over here. I knew I had, or I kind of felt like I had, I'd say felt, because I intuitively felt that I had the correct co configuration over here. But when I pinged here, it confirmed it. It confirmed my theory that, okay, this might be correct this might be the issue over here somewhere. So I have to check the switch settings. And yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much it for the DHCP relay configuration. Um, I hope this helped and I hope you learned something.